Okay, so now that we've set up our campaign, we're going to have to link some products to that campaign. So um, we're just going to click the back button over here and under show zero products, open that up and click add product. All right, so for the product names, uh, think about um, your offer and uh, whether it's uh, levels in a SaaS, like a basic level and a pro level, or actual products such as, you know, an ebook and then a video course or whatever those things are. Um, so you're going to break those down into individual products. In this case, Magic Social is a social media management service. So each product is basically a level of that service. So in this case, we've got about, uh, we've got different levels. So we're, I'm going to create this as the uh, one platform product and then in the product description we would add um, the actual description you want to see inside of the checkout page okay so in this case I do have um, a few notes that I'm going to add in here so there we go and uh, so the this description will show up actually on the checkout page and I'll show you that uh, when we start looking at uh, editing the checkout page or customizing each of your checkout pages um, I just want to make these bullets there we go um, and then um, here you can actually override the commission settings you may recall that we did set that up in the campaign but you might want to have a little bit more uh, control over exactly which uh, products get what kind of commission so your campaign is kind of like your catch-all umbrella and then at product level you can actually change the commission uh, to something different so you might want to change it um, you know from the 50% global to this product because it's say a physical product which actually costs additional money to you you might want to change it to 30% instead of 50 and so when uh, an affiliate actually sells this specific product you'll get 30% instead of the campaign 50% of course you can leave these out and if you do that it'll use the campaign settings okay landing page URL so um, the system does require this so that it knows uh, in your funnel where to direct traffic to okay so we're gonna go ahead and drop that in there um, and then your access page URL um, this is just where the customer can actually access their product or service so you can go ahead and create a uh, land, an access page URL for that so um, that it they know where to actually um, access the specific product so it might be a landing page that you set up um, where you know there's the download links or anything like that or uh, perhaps where, where they have to log in so um, that's what you will put in here and uh, if you're using the membership integration uh, system then uh, this is the URL it will use uh, to draw to send the customers to access their 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 membership area so um, this access page URL for the most part it's shown on the default thank you page from pay kickstart if if that's what you're using and um, it's also going to be used inside of the emails sent to the customer so they know how to access the product all right so then uh, under payment settings um, think about uh, uh, PayKix is very very flexible with payment settings so what you need to do here in your product settings is think about what your product would retail for so don't think about the special offer as much as you would think about uh, what is your normal retail cost of this product um, and then uh, when it comes to setting up the actual special offer um, you can do that in funnels because then that gives you flexibility at funnel level to change the pricing for each individual funnel for that product so consider this kind of like again like a campaign setting uh, is for commissions this is sort of your main uh, top level uh, retail price so um, in my case um, my retail price is actually going to be my first funnel as well so I'm just going to set this up as uh, exactly how we're going to, to do it in the first funnel but then uh, bear in mind that in future you can actually set up other funnels with different pricing even though you set up pricing here you can control it at funnel level and I'll show you that in uh, a subsequent video but for now um, let me just show you what the system is you know capable of here so this is going to be a membership service so we're going to change that payment frequency from one time which basically means it'll charge, it just, charge the customer just once and then that will be that uh, I'm going to switch that over to recurring and now uh, from here it allows me to determine um, exactly how I want to charge the customer so recurring frequency is um, uh, one and period is days so you read this as every 
uh, one day. So I'm going to charge $147 every one day, which of course I don't want to do. So I'm going to switch that over to months. So now it says I'm going to charge $147 every one month. Uh, so every month basically. Um, and the number of payments, if you do set a number of payments, that means that, uh, let's say for example I set that to three, it means that the customer will stop being charged after he's been charged three times for the subscription. Okay. If you don't want it to stop charging and it just charges forever, just leave that blank. Okay. Um, then we do have some additional features here. Uh, we have a trial ability, so I'm going to enable that because I do want to provide a trial. So I want to give them a 30-day trial and I'm actually going to charge them half price on that. So uh, let's figure that out for a second. So let's see. So half price for 30 days, so 147 times half price, so it's 73.50. Alright, you don't have to charge, you can of course um, make it a free trial if you want, If in which case you just hit zero over here. Um, sorry about, I think my this is because my screen's a bit small so it's wrapping down here, but basically um, the collect payment method allows you to actually offer a customer a free trial without even uh, getting their credit card or PayPal payment details. And if you do that, then of course it won't be able to do, it won't be able to start charging them immediately. Instead, PayKickSort will send off an email saying, "Hey, your trial period's expired. Um, you know, set up your payment method to continue using the service." And if they don't do that, then 24 hours later, that PayKickSort will fire off whatever IPNs or integrations you've asked for. Um, which will alert those systems that the uh, subscription has been cancelled because it's unable to continue charging them. All right, so um, you can also set up a free trial where you are collecting the payment method, and if you do check that box over there, uh, then it'll be a 30-day free trial, and then the system will automatically start charging $147 per month here, um, and that's based on the checkout page that um, they'll land on. They will have to put on their payment details uh, when they sign up for the trial. Okay, which is what I'm going to need here. So I'm just going to put my 7350 back in here. And as you can see, it just disappears the collect payment method because I'm actually charging an amount. So of course, I have to collect a payment method. All right, so um, split pay, that is something that you can also do uh, with um, Pay Kickstart. So you can give customers the ability to uh, pay over a period of time. So if, say, for example, you've got a high ticket item, say it's a $2,000 uh, item, you might want to sp uh, give them the option uh, to pay that over three months for, say, uh, whatever it is, um, you know, $800 a month or $700 a month. Um, and you can do that by, in by clicking the enable option here. Now, bear in mind, I'm in the recurring area. So this split pay actually refers to the trial period little curveball there. So um, I'm able to set up a th uh, like a 30-day trial uh, for 73.50 or I can set up uh, or I can give them the option to pay for this trial over a period. So um, for example where this is useful, uh, Pay Kickstart offers a diamond plan for a once-off price of uh, $9.97 for 12 months and then it, they charge um, then the normal PayPal subscription, I think it's the Pro, gets charged each month. So let's say that this is the Pro amount here, gets charged each month, but there's also a trial where Di um, Diamond gives you, say, 12 months up front of access. So let's say that's 997, um, sorry, for 12 months, so 365 days, and the amount is 997. But they also give you the option to have this uh, amount split up into to three payments. Still the trial period, but it's now split into three payments. So I can enable three um, split pay here and uh, set this up to uh, every one month. And I want three payments out of that. And let's say we're going to charge them 397. So in this setup here, what's going to happen is uh, the customer can pay will pay 997 for 365 days or 397 over three months for 365 days. Thereafter, they will be charged 147 per month. Okay, so I hope that that sort of clears it up for you. 
Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in the system and what you're actually able to do, which is really cool. So, but in my case, I don't need that. Um, and of course, uh, also in the one-time settings, you can also enable split pay. Obviously in one time, it's a lot simpler. It's either 147 once off, and then that's the end of it, or you might set up, uh, you know, one payment over three months of, you know, $67 or something like that. And after you've received three payments of $67, it'll stop charging the customer. All right, so it's the same kind of concept there. Uh, so let's just go back to recurring, uh, 147 per month, and my trial is 30 days, and 73.50. Okay, I don't need split pay here. Uh, licensing, so this is quite cool. It's basically, uh, PayKickSlot has a built-in licensing system. If you enable this, it will actually, um, you can issue as many licenses as you want on a per purchase basis. So let's say that I want to allow uh, somebody to use my software on three platforms. I will put three in here and what the system will do is it will automatically generate three licenses on, the, on each purchase. Then you can actually set up a custom integration on the back end to manage those licenses via PayKickStarts API. So if you want to do that, that's pretty cool. You can do that as well. In my case, I don't need it, so I'm going to leave it disabled. I also don't need a billing address or a shipping address on my checkout pages. Um, if you do need to capture the uh, customer's billing information, such as the, where they live and maybe a company name and that kind of thing, um, or in the shipping as well, you can go ahead and do that. But I don't need those, so I'm just going to click Save and Continue here. So what we've basically set up now is the main um, the main product details. So we've actually dealt with only the first step. And as you can see, now that I've saved, a whole bunch of new options have become available. I'm able to uh, select a checkout template and PayKixot has a large number of really good looking uh, checkout templates. And then, um, you know, all of these settings under step two deal with those individual um, settings. So uh, off with regards to the checkout. So it's all these things here and they even have multi-step checkouts. So you might want to capture their billing information first and then on step two, uh, let them choose which payment method they want to use and actually enter the details. And then on step three, they will complete their payment. So um, you can do that. There's about five of those templates. And of course, one step is quite popular. So there's a lot more uh, templates to choose from here. Um, we'll go in more detail, uh, you know, on editing checkout templates in another video though, because that's actually a separate video in and of itself, I assure you. So, um, sidebar text, I'm not going to concern myself with any of these things right now. Um, if you do enable the power buy badge on the pay kickstart, um, checkout page, um, it will, uh, and you're a pay kickstart affiliate, uh, uh Anybody, if anybody clicks on the badge on your checkout page and actually signs up for Pay Kickstart, uh, you'll make a commission. So that's kind of cool as well. Um, if you have any uh, CSS or tracking script code that you want to um, add to uh, your checkout pages, um, you can go ahead and do that. And each time your checkout page um, loads, it's going to load this tracking script or CSS code. Um, Make sure that this is empty if you're not adding anything new inside of here. Okay, legal checkbox. If you do need to have a checkbox that says, uh, I understand and agree to terms and privacy policy on the checkout pages, you can enable this and you can put the text in that you want to show there. And of course, make sure that you change these links here to the pages where you actually are outlining the terms of service and privacy policy. And if you do that, then uh, PayKixot will not allow them to purchase until they actually click the checkbox to agree to these terms. All right, and we'll continue with uh, these other options as well in the video with that uh, deals with editing the checkout page. But there's some really cool options here. For example, uh, you can add your own custom fields directly into the checkout page. So if you want to add unique fields that PayKickStart doesn't natively have on the checkout page, you can add those. And uh, we've also got they've also got the entered exit intent pop up. So there's lots of stuff that we can mess around with, and we'll show you that in the next video. Um, integrations. So um, in your campaign settings, we spoke about uh, the uh, secret key that you need to give to your developer if you're going to be using an IPN, the IPN service. Uh, you can, um, if you are going to be using it, you'll need to enable it and you'll need to tell PayKickSort which URL to fire the IPN to. 
Okay. Same thing with Zapier, you would have set up all your webhooks in your campaign settings, but inside of here, uh, at product level, you also have granular control, so you can actually set different uh, Zapier hook, webhook URLs at each individual product level. Uh, email integrations, um, if you are using an autoresponder service such as GetResponse or Aweber or any one of those, uh, you can actually set that up here and we'll, we'll do that in the next video as well. Um, webinars, if you're running any specific webinars for a product and you want to automatically register them um, for um, uh, uh, to, to, to to participate as an attendee in a webinar, uh, you can actually enable this as well and you'll see uh, the, these, these are all empty at the moment because we haven't set them up in integrations, but if I did set up a webinar integration such as go to webinar, uh, then PayKickSlot will automatically sign up them up for that webinar. Membership service, so if you uh, did set up your membership service at campaign level, you'll be able to select it here and uh, choose a level and so on that the customer will be added to uh, when they purchase a specific product. Okay, so advanced tracking code. This is uh, basically your purchase conversion code. So if your purchase, um, if you want to actually log at the sale, uh, trigger a, a conversion pixel after the sale event, uh, you can do that by uh, dropping the pixel into whichever area they they ask you to drop it into, either in the header or in the body. Uh, it might be Google Analytics or Facebook conversion pixel, and you can just drop the code directly into here. And any time a sale is triggered, this intermediate page, a, a, a very short intermediate page loads, and those pixels will then get fired. Okay, so we'll cover uh, uh, part two and part three in separate videos. This video is already getting a bit long. So um, for the most part though, uh, basically our product is actually already set up. So uh, all the other things are just additional options. Our product is actually ready to go and we can actually proceed with setting up um, our funnel if we want to from here. Um, the rest of it is really just customizations and integrations.